that name just to that moment in time, and you're from an apartheid hill in Boston, and you're on one heck of a page. And tell us the feeling, what that was like. You knew you probably had a good chance of having it in the bag. But when you tell us that, will you go back a little bit then to coming to Boston? So tell us, first of all, coming up that hill in Parkeray Hill, and uh, about 22 years of age, and uh, uh, the road ahead of you looking really good. Well, obviously, you study the course. I mean, it shows you the graph Parkeray Hill. It starts off downhill and flattens out halfway stage. I had a race plan. I, I, Stay back for six miles, about 100 yards back from the leader, and at six miles I was going to go up the moon. And at 13 miles there was a man in the head. Tom Sally was second, he was he'd been second the year before, and he was one of the favourites. He actually stayed about three hours down from me the night before, and he talking about he was talking to Wayne Spencer, and he did, yeah. <laughs> and Jerome Drayton was also another guy. Actually, he, he had won it as well. I was only checking back there, they kind of skipped. But I mean, when I got to Boston, heartbreak hill you asked me about. Um, coming from Tennessee, or coming from Tennessee, having been in Tennessee, East Tennessee, an awful lot of the terrain around was hilly, and I was always attack the hills, push and push. In fact, myself and Eddie Liddy, we sort of go up the hill, our heads be looked for five yards out and just push and push. So I had a strong background in hill running, and it didn't kind of phase me. At, at that stage too, you're, you're so drawn into the race that you're, I remember my Mitty Cooper another day on halfway, and I wasn't feeling too good, so <laughs> that's it, anyway. But um, I got all, I, I was running, I think around 209 pace up to that point, and slowed down at the descent into Boston, but it was a tough, it's a tough one, but at the same time, I enjoyed running those hills, and when I came off them, then the course didn't, the course didn't keep trying to keep your head together and get into Boston, and you're on the corner, there's a kind of a, a sharp right turn you run along, but then you turn into Boylston Street where the finish line is, and it's about three quarters of a mile down, so you look at the finish line and say, come on, and you get closer, come on to me. But it's great, I mean, I hadn't realised how big the event was even until I won it, because the amount of publicity afterwards, and Irish people, the population of Boston was about 87,000 as of late. And like, with, because I had the summer, a short sort of chance on my like, swing vest the night before, it kind of gave it a huge identity. So I was getting 10 or 20 dollar bills for the next two weeks down the shop and see how the deal around your eyes. So my mother even got a letter from home from Pike Paul and he, he was amazing to us. So but, uh, it was uh, it, it was it, it was fantastic, you know. I mean it's the one thing people always say to keep introducing me down and doing this guy on the last of the marathon, you know. So it carried a lot of weight in terms of like coming off the